Because I do. But now I've got the mentality of a police officer catches me speeding, I deserve the ticket. See, before I'd have said, oh, he's just somebody out there trying to, trying to write tickets and get numbers and all this kind of stuff. No, if I'm speeding down the road and I get pulled over for speeding, the police officer gives me a ticket, I deserve that ticket. I don't like it, but I deserve it. Amen. I don't run from them anymore. There was a time in life I'd run from them. I don't run from them anymore. Those blue lights come on behind me. If I think they're going to pull me over, I just go ahead and pull over. I was coming up through Route 60 here a year or two ago, right after I got that El Camino. Might have been three years ago. I'm going out Route 60 here in that El Camino. And I'm going up there, and my speedometer don't work. But I know I'm clicking pretty good. And, and, uh, and it runs about 10 or 11 miles fast. And I'm going up through there, and I, and I go by this, I go by, and I look over, and there's a sheriff's car sitting there. And I'm looking, and I thought, mm, he's going to pull out. I just went ahead and pulled over. Sure enough. He said, Mr. Miles, he said, I guess you know what I pulled you over for. <laughs> I said, well, yes, officer. I said, I know I was speeding. I said, uh, I, I don't know how fast I was going. I said, my speedometer's off. I said, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, I know I'm, I was going too fast. And I think I was doing 62 in that 55 mile an hour lane out through there. My speedometer said I was doing 70 some miles an hour. And uh, so I knew, you know, I was, in the, I was over the speed limit. But anyway, and uh, you say, what did he do? He checked my license, come back up, and told me to slow down, get my speedometer fixed, and bid me a good day. Praise the Lord. If I'd have made him put on the lights and all that kind of stuff and then pulled over, he'd have probably wrote me a ticket. <laughs> Amen. Peace. So what else did he introduce you to? Joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Oh, i got some sad times and all those kind of things, but i got great comfort too. I don't just have peace and joy. I've got great comfort even in those sad times. You say, who introduced you to that? Jesus Christ introduced me to that. I've got grace abundantly bestowed upon me. I've got his words. I've got the ministry. I've got preaching and teaching. Not only did he introduce me to some things, but he introduced me to people. Good night. The, the, the people I have, all of you people sitting here, you know, why I'm, you know why I'm introduced to you except for, you know, that bunch sitting over there that belong to me. But the rest of you, I know every one of you through our relationship, common relationship between the Lord Jesus Christ and ourselves. That's how I know you. You say, who introduced us? The Lord Jesus Christ introduced us. You see that thing? He introduced me to some friends. I got all you folks here. I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I've got uh, uh, preachers. Um, I got Brother Wilson, very good friend of mine, Brother Wilson. So how do you know one another? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Rex Harrison's gone on to glory. So how do you all know one another? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Dennis Black just graduated to heaven a few weeks ago. So how do you know one another? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. See. The Lord Jesus Christ, I know those folks. Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. So how do you know Dr. Peter S. Ruckman? I know Dr. Peter S. Ruckman through the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Mike Robinette that started this church. So how did I know him? I knew him through the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Donovan. I can go on and on and on. Brother Spurlock. Brother Hoy. Brother Cole. How many preachers? I don't know. I've got a whole list of preachers I pray, pray for nearly every day. At least mention their names. I've got a whole slew of them. And you say, what about that thing? We know one another through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what friends do. Friends introduce them to other friends of theirs. Some of my friends, for one reason or another, are no longer my friends. I can think of a guy right now. I did, I did not choose for him not to be my friend. He chose that. He went down a road I couldn't go. I didn't disown him as a friend. I just couldn't go down that road with him anymore. And or could go down the road with him to begin with. And you say, what about that thing? He doesn't consider me his friend today. Now, if he called me up and said, uh, said uh, Brother Miles, Brother Dennis, I'm, I'm in trouble and I need some help. What would you do? If it was in my powers to help him, I'd help him. As far as I'm concerned, he's still my friend. As far as he's concerned, I'm not his. But as far as I'm concerned, he's my friend. Uh, friends sometimes do things you can't agree with. 
and you can't go along with them on and all that kind of stuff. I've never, I've never disowned a friend. Not one time in my life can I remember, can I remember, and, and, and maybe we'll just one someplace out there that's escaped me, but as, as far as I can remember, I've never disowned a friend. I've, I've had some disown me, but I've never disowned them, as far as I know. There's something about when you get saved and start living right and start cleaning up that those dirty friends just seem like they go away. Amen. They just go away. You say, why? Because you ain't living the life they're living. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Unbeliever with the, with the lost? None. There's no fellowship there. The, 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 the strongest example of that I have in friendships, there was a fellow one time and we were old drinking buddies. And, uh, and uh, he come around by the house there and I knew he was going to come. At some point in time he was coming. I knew he was going to come and one day he pulls up in my driveway and I knew, I knew what he was going to do. I knew what he was going to have when he got out of the car. And I just went ahead and stepped out on the porch and out there in the yard where we were living at. And I, I said, hey, I'm glad you came around. I said, listen, that stuff's got to stay in the car. I said, you're welcome here. I said, I'm glad you come to see me. I said, but that stuff's got to stay in the car. I don't want it on my place no more. I don't want it to be around it. And he looked at me and he said, if it's not welcome, I'm not welcome. It's the last time he pulled in my driveway. I've, he's never, I've seen him since, but he's never been to my house one time since. You say, what about that thing? He made that choice, not me. You know what I found in life? I found that's the way it goes. You know what some of y'all are going to do? Some of y'all are going to keep them friends. Because they're your friends. And you're going to go right along doing what they're doing. Partaking of the same stuff they're partaking of. And you're going to go right along with them. You're going to keep right on being their friends. And, uh, and, and, and to, keep from, to keep from losing their friendship, you're going to go right on doing what you've always done. And who are you going to taint because of it? Look at Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. I don't preach much like this too many times, but I don't know why. But I can't get away from the thought, so I've got to preach it. Proverbs chapter 18. Look down there at verse number 24. Proverbs 18, 24, many of you could quote it. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The Lord Jesus Christ is still my friend. I haven't always done him right. He's still my friend. He didn't condone what I did wrong. He doesn't condone me doing wrong. He doesn't condone me, condone me not doing right. But he's still my friend. You know what he said over there in Hebrews? Over there in Hebrews he says, he says, uh, uh, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know what that's a reference to? That's an Old Testament reference. Look at Genesis chapter 28. That's a reference from the Old Testament. And it's to Jacob. Genesis 28. Verse 15. God talking to Jacob. 28, 15 of Genesis. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken of, or spoken to thee of. The Lord ain't going to leave you till he's performed what he's spoken to you of. You say, well, what's that? Oh, new body. <laughs> I ought have got more than one amen. A new body. You say, what else? Uh, a mansion in heaven. Amen. A perfect mind. Amen. Live eternal. So what about that thing? He said, I'm not leaving you till I have performed that which I have spoken to thee of. That's a blessing. You say, what is it? That's my friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. I've given you fellowship with the world and a turning point in a man's life and friendship and experiences from that point on. That's what I've given you this morning. Friendship of the world. That's what I had before Jesus Christ. 
I met the Lord Jesus Christ and it turned my life around. You say, what have you had? I've given you the friendships and experiences since that day. And you say, what? There's a great contrast there. A great contrast. You say, what made the difference? The Lord Jesus Christ made the difference. Now, who are the friends you have? You ought to ask yourself that question. Who are my friends? You ought to ask yourself another question. Why are they my friends? Because if truth be known, some of them friends are yours or your friends because you're doing the same thing they do. You have communion. You have fellowship. You have something in common. And it ain't good. Some of those friends, some of those friends you have are good friends. And they're your friends because you do have some things in common and they're good things. But who are your friends and why are they your friends? Let me ask you this question. What kind of influence do you have on your friends? What kind of influence do you have on your friends? You know what I've tried to do? I've tried, especially since I've learned some Bible and things, not shortly after I got saved. If I run into one of my old friends, I try to get a witness in on them. I'd hate to see one of them die and go to hell because of me. See, I introduced some folks to things too. Some, some folks could say of Dennis Miles, I had a friend. And he introduced me to this and he introduced me to that. And some of it ain't real pretty. Thank God I got a few friends, hopefully out there someplace. I got a friend, Dennis Miles, and you know what he introduced me to? Jesus Christ. You know, one of the greatest, one of the greatest, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you the contrast. One of the greatest joys I ever had as far as a preacher is concerned and ministries as far as outside the church is concerned is a lady uh, 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 stopped that, that uh, they had a, they have a music ministry her and her family do and they were over in West Virginia there at a New Year's Eve uh, watch night service. And uh, she said, she, she said uh, they were over there and this young man stood up and he said, uh, he said, I got saved over at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. He said, uh, there was a fellow by the name of Dennis Miles preaching over there one night, and I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I never saw that guy after he got out of jail. I'm going to see him in heaven one day. I introduced him to somebody. That's a blessing. Amen. What are you introducing your friends to? Told them about Jesus Christ. Told them about the latest, or if you told them about the latest video game and latest statistics and all of those things. Do you know, my friend, Jesus Christ? Do you know him? If you don't know him, I sure would like to introduce you to him. He's a fine fella. Can't find anything wrong with him. I put him under a microscope. Can't find anything wrong with him. Judge one time says, I find no fault in him. He sure couldn't say that to Dennis Miles. I got a good friend. I'll introduce you to him. You, you, you accept him as your friend. You accept him as your savior. I'm going to tell you something. He's going to introduce you to some of the greatest people on earth. And some of the great experiences on earth. You know, my friend. All right, let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes.